In May 2016, we spent several wonderful days at Elephant Watch Camp in Kenya's Samburu Reserve. While it was truly thrilling to be in the midst of elephant families, to observe their interactions and watch the antics of the young, we also came to Samburu to visit elephant research pioneer and founder of Save the Elephants, Ian Douglas Hamilton, his wife Aurea, their daughter Saba, and Frank Pope, Saba's husband and chief of operations at Save the Elephants. One afternoon, in order to learn more about STE and its projects, Ian invited us to join him at the Save the Elephants research camp. I'm Ian Douglas Hamilton from Save the Elephants. It's great to have you here, John and Jutta. And uh, we've been talking about the ongoing elephant crisis where the elephants are being killed for their ivory. So we've been looking at this in great detail right here where we are now in Samburu and across Africa as well. It's actually been an ongoing body count for a number of years. We started in 2002 because we were worried that the poaching was increasing. We calculated that 100,000 elephants were killed in the years 2010 to 2012. That's 100,000 elephants in three years. Now the total population, we're not absolutely sure how many they are, but there's something of the order of 500,000 or less. As grim as these numbers are, progress in elephant protection is being made, tracking elephants equipped with the latest technology in radio collars being just one example. These are old collars. Each one has been on an elephant probably for up to three years and different types of make. We've been tracking elephants now using GPS technology since 1995. And <clears throat> here are all the stages. So, Latterly, a collar should stay on for about three years. It'll give us a position every hour, and it doesn't matter whether it's up or down a mountain, in or out of a forest, across an international border. The elephants that are being tracked can also be protected by the rangers. This is an amazing innovation, and we have beautiful software that we've developed, and we shared it with people like our neighbors at Lewa, who have a control room and lots of patrols and the combination is really effective in heightening the security of elephants. It's one of the reasons why poaching has come down in this part of Kenya. One of Save the Elephants' major undertakings is the Elephant Crisis Fund, which supports numerous projects across Africa. We asked Ian to give us some insight regarding its mission and partnerships. Well, our Elephant Crisis Fund is directed towards solving the current upsurge in killing for ivory, which involves traffickers, criminal networks, and is driven by high demand for ivory, which comes mainly from the Far East, mainly from China. So our strategy is to try to stop the killing, stop the trafficking, and stop the demand for ivory. The Elephant Crisis Fund uh, is uh, unique in that all the money that is raised goes directly to partners in the field with absolutely no overhead from the parent organizations, which are Save the Elephants and the Wildlife Conservation Network. The crisis is something that has come tearing up on us like a tidal wave out of control. So. We seek out the people who are really doing the good work. Now, our other aim is to build collaboration between NGOs and governments. And with these aims in mind, we have chosen over 50 projects right in three uh, regions of Africa. On stopping the trafficking, we're helping governments to build up communication and um, informer networks to understand the, na the people who are trafficking. The aim here is to lead to better prosecutions, arrests, prosecutions and convictions of the main ivory traffickers. 
finally, uh, on the question of lowering the demand for ivory. This is vital. We have a number of projects we're supporting in China that range from researching the price of ivory to detect whether there's any change in the demand to supporting new laws, to uh, getting Chinese lawyers who will work with the government to implement the amazing policy declaration of the Chinese government, which was declared in December 1915 by President Xi, uh, Xi Jinping, that he would join with President Obama to stop all ivory traffic in their countries. The Crisis Fund has fostered projects in Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, the Central African Republic, the DRC, Gabon, Cameroon, and Ethiopia. Its partners, whether large or small, all do important elephant conservation work. However, most lack the funds for armed patrols, vehicles, radios, and other essential equipment. And it's the financial assistance from the Crisis Fund that enables these partners to do their crucial work and make a real difference on the ground. The successes of the fund's projects are quite significant and are reflected in the great number of confiscated arms, destruction of poachers camps, and more, but perhaps most importantly in the number of arrests, prosecutions, and convictions of poachers. The sentencing in July 2016 of Faisal Ali Mohammed, a major ivory trafficker in Kenya, to 20 years in prison is an outstanding example of how effective the fund and its partners, in this case Wildlife Direct, truly are. Before leaving the camp, we asked Ian to tell us about the extensively modified research vehicle which had caught our attention when we first arrived. So this truck here is a result of a very angry elephant who was fighting with another, and he was losing the battle. So our two researchers, who were innocently parked under a tree, became the object of his anger. He broke off the fight, walked over to this truck, and rammed his tusks in the back, splintered all the superstructure, flipped the car outside, and then started pummeling it with his tusks. Ian's story was very much on our minds when later we found ourselves suddenly in the presence of a very large bull. Dripping from his temporal glands, he was obviously in must, a condition marked by raging testosterone levels, which often cause heightened aggression. Our guides knew this elephant by name and felt we were in no danger, but I felt my heart rate increase nevertheless. Before he took his leave, the bull gave us a look as if to say, you don't know how lucky you were, do you? After his departure, we found less intimidating elephants whose company we enjoyed tremendously. When in the midst of these still trusting elephants who have not yet learned to fear man, it makes one ashamed of what our kind has done to these sensitive, intelligent beings.
But awareness of the plight of the elephants continues to grow, and the battle against ivory poaching and the sale of ivory is being waged now in more and more countries, including the U.S. and China. We left Samburu knowing that Save the Elephants is not only an effective guardian of Samburu's elephants, but through its Elephant Crisis Fund, also a champion of some of the most threatened elephants in many other parts of Africa. But fighting these ongoing battles requires continued funding and support. Please consider joining the fight to protect and conserve by making a donation to Save the Elephants. Thank you. I'm John Kay for the Maokei Foundation.